Not long ago, we'd met the word for cat, so when one of my fellow students' cats insisted on getting some attention, I took the opportunity to comment on this. Rosalind-san no hiza no ue ni neko ga imasu. And a cat also appeared in the next clip, albeit a cartoon one. We'd already met up and down and right and left some lessons ago. And this situation let us add in front of and behind to our repertoire. Learning sets of words like spatial dimensions, colours, times of day, family members, etc. A few at a time and piecemeal is a good principle. Working this way avoids memory overload. And in any case, the subconscious mind has absolutely no need for words and language to be pre-sorted into sets. It'll make any connections that might actually be useful by itself. In the next clip, I get some extra practice with talking accurately about what's on the left or on the right, depending on where you start from. <laughs> I'm not particularly nationalistic, but I definitely wanted to make sure that everyone knew that I'm from Scotland and that Scotland has a different national flag from England. Watch me making my point in Japanese. And continuing the theme of which country people came from, you'll see me asking one of my fellow students where one of the stick people on screen came from. This kind of interaction is one of the great benefits of learning a language as part of a group. Different levels of formality is a very important feature of Japanese. In our classes, we've been almost exclusively using standard formal language. However, in the next clip, my fellow student pointed to pictures of people that we both knew, and I used the more polite word for person, kata, instead of the standard formal word, hito, to say where these people were. Sono kata wa nihon ni Sono kata mo nihon ni I knew that there must be much more to this aspect of Japanese, but for now, it felt good to have started a new mental thread labelled degrees of formality or some such, even if as yet it only contained one or two bits of unconnected data. The next clips show me adding the ability to say nothing in Japanese. Talking about nothing in this sentence required me to use three familiar function words, nani, mo, and arimasen, in a new pattern to express this new meaning, but... This meant I had to jettison or at least adapt the hypotheses that I'd already built about these words. I've come to think of this process as allowing my mental furniture to shift about. My metaphor for what must be the mind's process of making, breaking and remaking neural connections as I experience more of the language. It's probably my imagination, but I seem to actually feel this mental furniture shifting around every time I hit something surprising like this. Chairo no bo no migi ni. We have to keep flexible when we're learning a language, or in fact anything. Otherwise, we're going to hold ourselves back. <laughs> 